हेलो आई एम डॉक्टर श्याम राठी आई एम अ प्रैक्टिसिंग ऑर्थोपेडिक सर्जन सिंस लास्ट मोर देन थर्टी इयर्स एट अमरावती इन महाराष्ट्र आई एम डीलिंग विथ ऑल टाइप ऑफ ट्रॉमा एंड अदर स्पेशलिटीज ऑफ द ऑर्थोपेडिक बट मोर एंड मोर इन दिस इरा आई एम फेसिंग मोर एंड मोर पेशेंट्स ऑफ ओल्डर एज ग्रुप एंड दे आर ऑल सफरिंग फ्रॉम ऑस्टियोपोरोसिस एंड अदर रिलेटेड डिसऑर्डर्स so today uh, we are dealing with mainly importance of musculoskeletal health actually musculoskeletal health plays a key role to keep up good mobility and dexterity in an individual along with enhancing their ability to work and actively participate in all aspects of life good musculoskeletal health is also crucial to maintain economic social and functional independence across their life course physical activity plays an important role in reducing the risk of other non communicable diseases and it can only be achieved with adequate musculoskeletal health there is a definite relationship between painful musculoskeletal condition and a reduced capacity to engage in physical activity so impaired musculoskeletal health can lead to acute and chronic pain causing physical limitation proceeding in loss of participation and withdrawal from usable social community and occupational activities further decreasing the quality of life and well being including mental well being impaired musculoskeletal health can lead to substantial personal community and social consequences particularly in older people a strong relationship between painful musculoskeletal condition lack of physical activity and resulting functional decline frailty loss of well being and loss of independence as well as there is the depressive syndromes it has been described by several epidemiological studies an individual with arthritis and musculoskeletal disorder is sure to be lesser active than an individual without arthritis thus a lack of regular physical activity emerges as the most prevalent risk factor associated with functional decline most importantly impaired musculoskeletal health causing reduced physical activity and reduced physical capability also like grip strength walking speed chair rising and standing balance has been frequently linked to increased mortality thus weak musculoskeletal health is a key component of frailty the impact of impaired musculoskeletal health is now recognized globally with an increase in morbidity and mortality related to good musculoskeletal health is crucial for maintaining an active productive and prolonged working life with an increase in the global retirement age maintaining good musculoskeletal health will become increasingly important for older workers as many occupations and work related activities are associated with musculoskeletal disorder like low back pain and shoulder disorder thus it is important to identify and implement effective interventions for people with musculoskeletal conditions to remain productive at work high income countries observed musculoskeletal conditions to be one of the major cause of work loss early retirement and loss of retirement benefit while developing countries see musculoskeletal conditions to have a major impact on livelihoods thus reduced musculoskeletal health results in reduced productivity and economic loss to society at all levels since musculoskeletal conditions are chronic painful associated with disability and social disengagement frequently causes mental health impairment also such as depression and anxiety physical and mental aspects of quality of life related to health are known to be greatly impacted in person with multi morbidity unfortunately this impact is even greater when there is an associated musculoskeletal conditions or disorders this is definitely a burden of disease related to musculoskeletal condition the non communicable diseases now account for the most of the global burden of disease with musculoskeletal conditions being the leading contributor developed countries well recognize the transition of burden of burden to long term disabling conditions however now low and middle income countries are also demonstrating the enormous future impact from musculoskeletal disorders such as osteoporosis and low back pain driven by population growth and aging since age remains one of the most common risk factor for musculoskeletal condition it is estimated that by 2050 there will be five times as many people over 40 years living in developing countries compared to the wealthier countries so the older populations are increasing day by day 
Additionally, obesity, another important risk factor for many musculoskeletal condition is also expected to rise dramatically in the developing world over the coming two decades. Furthermore, increased use of motor vehicle is not only reducing physical activity, but also increasing the number of motor vehicle accidents and resulting musculoskeletal trauma and disorders. Sustained and systemic urbanization in developed countries has led to sedentary behavior among the people, particularly younger ones. The rapid growth of TV channels, video games, social media, movie streaming, all lead to the, these are all the prime contributors. This surge in sedentary behavior is not only a major risk factor for many chronic diseases, but is also recognized as a substantial global economic burden. Increasing physical activity and optimizing exercise as recommended by Arthritis Research UK and WHO, that is World Health Organization, is an optimal way to improve musculoskeletal health. Evidence shows that the effect of a sedentary lifestyle for example, desk job can be reduced by a small amount of activity every day. A recent meta-analysis utilizing the data of more than 1 million individuals concluded that one hour of moderate level activity daily can eliminate the increased risk of death associated with eight hours of sitting. Thus, a moderate level of physical activity remains a key requirement for healthy aging and maintaining musculoskeletal health. Sedentary behavior is a major contributor of obesity and type 2 diabetes. Likewise, obesity is also a major contributor to the development and progression of osteoarthritis, with several epidemiological studies confirming the link between adiposity and joint degenerative changes. Evidence suggests that increasing the level of physical activity will not only increase musculoskeletal health, but also decrease the risk of suffering from obesity-related disease such as diabetes. Nearly two hours per week of moderate physical activity or about 20 minutes per day of any kind of physical activity like brisk walking is recommended by WHO. These exercises elevate heart rate and are known to be associated with lower lifetime risk of cardiovascular episode. Apart from rendering musculoskeletal health benefits, improvement in cardiorespiratory fitness can be achieved by changing sedentary behavior to achieve a low intensity physical activity like walking. Exercise is also is, is now widely prescribed for rehabilitation of musculoskeletal injuries and its use as a preventive health measure is now widely investigated with guidelines around the type of exercise, frequency and duration of activity being considered. Low back pain and neck pain, common elements, can be benefited by staying active and exercising regularly. Group exercise programs or weight loss support can be considered. To reduce the incidence of falls, balance and strength training, home hazard assessment, participation in falls prevention programs, and getting involved in activities like gardening, dancing, etc. will help. Osteoarthritis has been shown to be benefited from activities and exercises that improve muscle and aerobic fitness, like walking, swimming, weight loss, support can be rendered if required. There is a definite association between healthy aging and physical exercise. Aging is inevitable. Everyone will going to be age of an old age, but it can be made easy and healthy with the help of exercise. Exercise renders many benefits to the aging body, including reducing the manifestation of aging, especially the aging phenotype of the elderly. A recent systemic review concluded physical exercises render a positive impact on muscle mass and function in healthy subjects aged 60 or above by improving muscle strength, by increasing the performance of the ratio of the type 1 to type 2 muscle fibers and increasing the cross-sectional area of type 2 muscle fibers. A European Society for Clinical and Economic Aspect of Osteoporosis, Osteoarthritis and Musculoskeletal Disease Task force recommended higher protein intake in combination with physical exercises. In postmenopausal women at risk of developing a menopause associated musculoskeletal disease like osteoporosis. Physical exercise programs improve strength and balance in aging women with osteoporosis. Additionally, 
fragility fracture risk associated with osteoporosis can be decreased by following an exercise program. As exercise increases bone density and reduces even inflammatory markers, thus having an active lifestyle from an early age and following recommendations for exercise could be beneficial for women. Furthermore, exercises and mechanical loading also have a positive impact at the molecular, cellular, and tissue level. Like with aging, the potential for cell proliferation and number of stem or progenitor-like cells decreases in tendons. Exercises loading can induce an increase in tendon collagen synthesis, thus increasing the tendon strength. Physical exercise and mechanical loading also have a positive role in maintaining cartilage and bone health. Moderate exercise could also enhance the quality of tissue produced during the healing of injured tendons. Surge in sedentary behavior and unhealthy diet have caused a global obesity epidemic along with a sharp rise in the incidence of type 2 diabetes. These are further great risk factors for cardiovascular and neurodegenerative changes, which further complicates the management of musculoskeletal disease. Obesity is an important comorbidity of many musculoskeletal conditions and is closely related to the development of osteoarthritis one of the commonest musculoskeletal health issues. The strategies aimed in reducing obesity in the adults will reduce the occurrence of osteoarthritis and thus can alleviate some of the pain of the condition. Interestingly, obesity is also one of the most modifiable risk factor in osteoarthritis. Exercise and weight loss have benefited overweight and obese adults with knee osteoarthritis in many clinical trials. Thus, combining modest weight loss with moderate exercise can provide the best overall improvement in symptoms of pain and joint function. What are the consequences of childhood obesity and physical inactivity? Nowadays, we are seeing many uh, childhood obesity also. Lack of physical exercise in childhood causes childhood obesity, which further leads to musculoskeletal pain in later life. Thus, reducing obesity in children is very important by encouraging physical activity will also reduce the risk of developing musculoskeletal pain later in life. Furthermore, consumption of unhealthy diet and sedentary lifestyle is contributing to the increased incidence of childhood obesity. Low in nutritional value and high in caloric content foods further contribute to the obesity epidemic, which may also play a role in the high prevalence of type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular disease which are further exacerbated by lack of fitness and by inactivity. Is diet is also a part of healthy living? Yes, definitely. Diet is inevitably an important part of healthy living. A three-year follow-up study including about 400 adults showed that diet high in potassium, which we usually get from fruits and vegetables, reduced the amount of muscle loss in adults more than 65 years of age, that is elderly population. Dietary flavonoid intake again, which we get from fruit and vegetable, is also known to be positively correlated with good bone health, that is bone mineral density and bone resorption in perimenopausal women. Improving the diet of osteoarthritis patients have also been shown great benefit. Vitamin D, calcium, and particularly protein consumption have been shown to optimize muscle, bone, and functional outcome in older people, reducing fall and fractures. Calcium and protein synergistically optimize bone health. Thus, dietary strategies for improving musculoskeletal health should include consumption of long-chain fatty acids, vitamin D, vitamin K. Vitamin K helps in bone and cartilage mineralization and decreasing blood cholesterol. Antioxidant-rich diet may benefit athletes by improving tissue repair. Sarcopenia in elderly people can be benefited by combining exercise with a dietary supplement of whey protein fortified with vitamin D as it increases muscle mass and strength. So overall, musculoskeletal health is dependent on moderate exercise and protein-rich diet, vitamin K, vitamin D supplementation. By doing this, by taking care of musculoskeletal system, you add uh, life to the years. This is my take-home message, that moderate exercise daily and good, healthy, nutritious Protein-rich diet is a must for every individual, especially after the age of 40-45. Thank you.